What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay Rich, back to bring you your MLB props for June the 8th. Yesterday, unfortunately, we had a bad day, man. Um, for whatever reason, Austin Riley decided not to hit. Jock Peterson couldn't take care of Herman Marquez. Like I mentioned, the BVP, not great, but was willing to roll with them overall because of the matchup. But Marquez actually pitched really, really well after struggling a little bit in the first. And then Bryce Harper, um, the Phillies, they won the game, but they didn't do a whole lot on, from an offensive standpoint. A lot of solo shots, not a lot of run production, not a lot of hits piling up. But we are back today. We have more picks and more bets i have a few different things i want to show you guys that i added to the sheet to you know kind of make it more complete show you guys some more information instead of having to go back and forth i have it all for you here on one sheet so let's dive into it right now so as you see one of the common themes we've seen more recently is that cincinnati is playing very very well the heart of that order of tommy fam brandon jury and Joey Votto have been popping in the model almost every day, and they continue to again today. You see the largest edge is with Tommy Pham, but running down the list real quickly, we got Marcus Semyon, Cattell Marte, Tommy Pham, Jorge Soler, Wilson Contreras, Christopher Morel, Wilmer Flores, Austin Hayes, Joey Votto, and Kevin Kiermeyer for another under. Prize pick has been projected for six and a half points. I am projected for two. He batted clean up yesterday and went 0 for 4. So we are definitely going to be more than likely riding the Kevin Kiermaier train. Like I said, maybe not a core play, but if you want to play an under, the dude is looking like free money right now. So let's start at the top of the board with Marcus Semyon. He's up against Shane Bieber. That's important. Why? Because Shane Bieber is good. He's a very good pitcher. He has struggled a little bit this season. As you can see, his pitch factor is relatively neutral. Park factor in Cleveland little bit below average but the pitch value factor for Semyon is in his favor now I did adjust this actually before it was based off season data I've since switched that so now it's based off the last two weeks for batters and the last month for pitchers so a little bit more trend type of data so we're looking at things that are happening more recently and recently Marcus Semyon is tearing the cover off the ball as you can see here I added the hits per game total bases per game runs per game RBIs per game and extra base hits per game I did not want to do home runs because home runs are spotty and we know the home run hitters that can hit it far and hit it long and get those home runs but more importantly i want to look at extra base hits because those are the guys that are hitting the ball to the gaps consistently driving in runs easier rbi production or rbi production run production and doing it more consistently you see here joey Votto almost one extra base hit per game which is phenomenal but again he's only averaging one hit per game so when he hits it it's going for extra bases more than likely but back to Semyon, he has four home runs in his last three games so he is hot to say the least right he's playing very very well the issue is they've all been solo shots he's been batting lead off a lot he's been getting steals so as you can see you know he's getting a few hits he's getting a lot of total bases because of these home runs he's been scoring runs and scoring rbis but a lot of solo shots batting in that one hole it's difficult at times to get these to get these rbis because the guys at the back of the order they're not getting on base at as high of a rate as the guys at the top of the order so we'll see but prize picks gave him a line of five and I have a massive edge here at 1.35. Again, is he going to do that? He is on a tear, obviously, over the last 14 days, 15.43 points, but five home runs in his last 14 days will do that. Four, of course, in the last seven days where he is crushing the ball right now. So a lot of things pointing up for Marcus Semien. He has a 333 average against Shane Bieber. Must have played him last year in Toronto. Again, I, I, I don't think I love this play. You see the edge. You see the park factor, the pitch value. It, it's tantalizing, to say the least. And, and again, a, a five for Marcus Semien is like nothing. You know, Shane Bieber has been pretty good more recently. He's averaging, you know, between two to three runs. He's coming off an 11th strikeout game, though. So I'm kind of like, ugh. You know, if Shane Bieber's on, he's, he's on. But, I mean, at the end of the day, you are betting on Marcus Semien, who's been super hot. Batting first in the order, so maximizing your at-bats, which maximizes your potential fantasy points. I don't love it. Don't hate it. It's okay. Let's go to Cattell Marte, who I'm not all in on. He just has a massive projection because of this pitch factor by Mark, Mike Miner, who got shelled in his first get start of the season. Again, Cincinnati, Arizona has been a slugfest. There's been, I think there was another 17 runs yesterday or even more than that because, yeah, it might have been almost 21 runs because I think it was like 13 to 8 by the time the game was over. Votto homered, Fam homered, Drury homered, Stevens, like everyone homered yesterday for Cincinnati. They all went over. And I think I'd be willing to play them again today. They're up against Merrill Kelly, but Cattell Marte up against Mike Miner. The issue is you see here only about one hit per game. So that's not 
overly great production. He's, you know, getting pretty close to a double or so, two total bases per game, but he's not scoring a lot of runs, not getting a lot of RBIs. Extra base hits are pretty good, but overall, I'm not loving it. And of course, he is 0 for 4 versus Mike Miner in his career. Mike Miner is, you know, starting again for the first time, got shelled by the Nationals, now coming back and playing against the Red or playing against the Cardinal or not the Cardinals, the Diamondbacks. He should he could be okay. Like that's the issue. We, we don't know what he's going to be and I don't necessarily want to run the risk there. He could get blown up quick again. Fully will admit that, but he's you know Marte is not scoring a ton of points. He's just jacked up in here because of the pitch factor from Mike Miner. So small sample. Don't want to go all in on Cattell Marte. But I do like Tommy Pham. It's it's difficult to not like him. The only thing that's really scaring me off a little bit is his BVP data. You can see he's only got 13 at bats. He's hitting 231, which is fine. You know, he does have a home run against Merrill Kelly. He's got four RBIs, which is solid. And as well, the Cincinnati Reds are obviously on fire. You can see, you know, he's getting about a hit per game he's you know two total bases per game a run per game an rbi per game half an extra base hit per game like that there's a lot of good things here for tommy fam you see the pitch value is also heavily in his favor hitting the fastballs very very well i do like fam today i don't know if he's a core play because the two guys below him Jorge soler and wilson Contreras. I think just have better matchups. Josiah Gray, much better matchup from a pitcher perspective. He allows a ton of runs. While Jorge Soler is not getting a ton of hits right now, he is hitting them for extra bases most of the time. He's scoring almost a run per game. He's been walking, which is pretty good. And he's he bet he has two hits with a home run in five at bats versus Josiah Gray. So I think that small history there gives him a slight edge to go over and his projection right now on price because it's only six so it's not bad we saw jazz chisholm hit two home runs yesterday solaire was fine i don't mind a six projection for solaire i think there's a lot of upside here and josiah gray is a dude who just can allow a ton of runs so overall i think he's just a slightly better play than we're looking from fam and then you get into Contreras, who's one of my favorite plays he was a play yesterday over a hit per game, two and a half total bases, almost a run per game, half an RBI per game, you know, 0.6 extra base hits per game. I was looking at him yesterday, targeted him yesterday, didn't love the matchup overall, but he bombed. He hit a home run. I, I did like him. And, you know, today up against Jordan Lyles, seven at bats, two home runs, five RBIs. It's very difficult to fade a guy like that who did bomb yesterday and did have a great game. So I think Wilson Contreras has to be the first core play. Like you look at the, this matchup for the Chicago Cubs versus Jordan Lyles. He could be in trouble, man. He's some games he has a ton of strikeouts, but he's averaging almost three earned runs per game. He allows quite a few hits. Doesn't walk a ton of batters, but unless he's get, racking up the strikeouts and playing really, really well, chances are Morel and Morale and Contreras will have a great game today. Both of them, you see, seven points and seven and a half points. Now, I'm willing to bet a little bit more on the history with Contreras. But if you want to do a mini Cubs stack, I don't hate it overall because Morel has been playing very, very well. As you can see, Contreras 12.33 over his last seven and Morel 11.86 over his last seven. So two pretty damn hot hitters. And then you see Soler here, 9.14. I didn't point that out. And Fam for 12. Like I mentioned, Cincinnati, just all their guys on fire. You see Votto down here as well, just killing it. So I do like a mini stack of the Cubs if that's the way you want to go. I think there's a lot of value there with Lyles. And on the other side, even Trey Mancini has been balling out too. He didn't quite make these plays, but he has been playing very, very well and did homer yesterday. So I don't mind him as well if you wanted to go with that little mini game stack there. You have Wilmer Flores, who's averaging 11.67 over his last seven, 9.75 over his last 14, probably batting third in the order. Uh, Jock Peterson didn't play very well yesterday, but you know who did was Wilmer Flores. He bombed. He's averaging over a hit per game, 2.25 total bases. You know, he's mostly slapping singles, not doing a ton from the extra base hit department, you know, a little bit over half an extra base hit. But he's up against Antonio Sanzanella, who's not great. He's not he's not great overall, um, and I think Flores can get the most of them. We'll see. They are playing in San Francisco, so not a ton from a park factor perspective. It's about neutral this year, so not bad. But pitch value is in his favor. 11.5 projection, you know, 76% edge, so pretty solid. Um, he's obviously never faced Sanzanella, but he should be fine. I do think he is worth worthy of a couple plays here and there. Like I mentioned with Baltimore, Austin Hayes is a guy who is popular in the model up against Marcus Stroman. He's not hit Stroman overly well, you know, only one for three, which is fine. But Stroman, he got beat up last game, like just terrible. Hayes has been doing a lot out of the two hole. He's hit out of the four hole a little bit. 
So we'll see. You know, he's he's not getting a ton of total bases. He's scoring runs, which is good. You know, RBIs are there, but the extra base hit department hasn't quite been there for Hayes. So, you know, you want to see those extra base hits because it kind of raises the ceiling of some of those players, like you see with Joey Votto here, um, who we'll talk about in a second. But I, I do like Hayes. I think there's a world where he does go over. Stroman, you know, he's very familiar with Baltimore, not so much with this regime and this lineup overall, but we'll see. You know, Stroman's been struggling a lot late, lately, and that's why that pitch value, that pitch factor is so high but he's you know he's still a sinker ball pitcher gets a lot of ground balls so you see here the weighted fastball weighted slider you know not quite in the favor of Hayes but he has been pretty damn good so it's hard not to like what we've seen from Hayes so far and I do think the Cubs do shake out really well and I think we could see similar things on the Baltimore side after they just put up I believe eight runs on the Cubs yesterday or it was nine runs so they are playing pretty well as well and I do think that between Lyles and Stroman there could be quite a few runs in that matchup and then last but not least, Joey Votto up against the same Merrill Kelly like Tommy Pham. So you see the pitch factor is, uh, it's okay. You know, 1.01, nothing really advantageous on either side. But you see the P-Val factor for Joey Votto, who is just mashing fastballs right now. You see he's averaging almost one extra base hit per game. And he's averaging only one hit per game. So pretty much every time he hits it, going for extra bases, home runs, doubles. You know, he's probably not slugging out a triple, but he's averaging over an RBI per game and a run per game. If you did want to bet Joey Votto to hit get an RBI, I don't hate it overall. You know, I wanted to show show this for people who are looking at total bases props. You see every single player on this list outside of obviously Kevin Kiermaier averaging over two total bases per game over the last 14 days, which is pretty damn good. You see Votto averaging 2.67. He's a guy, like I said, and talked about this a few days ago, great plate discipline, great overall hitter, just a little bit older, right? So you can't necessarily count on him to be productive every game, but he's hot right now. 12.33 fantasy hitters fantasy score over his last 14 and 13 over his last seven. So I do like Votto quite a bit. I think, you know, if you're looking at Fam and Votto as two guys you want to play, Fam, I, I'm a little bit weary of. You see, he's not necessarily projected to be in the lineup right now, but we can check that a little bit later. It's kind of just a first look. And I do really like Contreras. I'd be willing to run the risk with Soler and his hitter profile not being super hot. And if you want to play Simeon, I mean, it's difficult to ignore how good he's been so far. Bieber hasn't been the best pitcher overall, but he's been pretty damn good. You see the biggest issue here is that slider value. If Bieber's slider is on, Simeon may struggle a little bit. He has not hit sliders very well over the past 14 days. But Cattell Marte, you know, we'll see about him too up against Mike Miner. He's going to bat really in a really good spot in the order and has a lot of run potential. Not a, so much from the RBI department. The problem is the guys behind him aren't hitting very well. And where you have Fam, hot Cincinnati lineup, Votto, hot Cincinnati lineup. And then on top of that, you have this Baltimore Chicago game, which is going to be another target. We could also see some runs in this Miami Washington game. Josiah Gray, I believe it's Pablo Lopez on the other end. So that's not great for Washington hitters and why their projections are very low. You know, though that guy is whew, damn good, damn good, right? Whoever it is for Miami, I know it's a it's a good pitcher. Whether it's Al uh, Alcantara or it's Pablo Lopez, it's probably Alcantara to be honest, based off of what we're looking at right now, what I've seen in the data, because Washington is heavily depressed in some of these rankings. But so if I'm if I'm looking at it honestly, like I do, I think we sh I don't think I'm fading Cincinnati today. I think it's a slightly better matchup. Uh, I think there's a lot of things to like with these guys. Six and a half for Fam, and you see a seven for Votto here is pretty damn good. I like Wilson Contreras because again, you do have that history, you know. Tommy Pham is familiar with Merrill Kelly, but he hasn't hit him overly well, but does have a bomb against him, which is great to see. But Wilson Contreras, easily the best his history of all these guys, batting over 500. Jorge Soler has hit Josiah Gray pretty well. I'm assuming that was likely this season. Only a line of six overall, so I do like that. So there's a lot of things to like on this slate. I hope you guys got this, like this information, you know, some of this new stuff here with the hit totals and things like that. I've revamped the p-value to make it more realistic as far as what's happened more recently, and that's why you see a guy like Simeon at a value of two, where before he would have been a lot lower because of his slow start. But overall, make sure you guys check these lineups and, and see what's happening in the league. But overall, those are the kind of guys I'm liking right now. If I were to kind of mix and match a three, I'd probably do fam, Votto and Wilson Contreras. I just think that Cincinnati is just playing so well right now. It's very difficult to stay away from these guys. I do like Morel. I like Flores. Hayes is another option. Mancini, like I talked about, been on fire so far. Soler's been good. I don't know if I'm all in on him. Marte. And then, of course, Marcus Semien versus Jane Bieber. Shane Bieber is interesting. And if you want to go with an under, Kevin Kiermeyer. I didn't even talk about it with on the sheet, but dude's been cashing just straight unders. He's projected to, he's projected to bat eighth. He batted literally clean up yesterday, over four, literally a hole in the cleanup spot. I like it. And as always, 
Make sure if you tail, give them hell. And if we fail, don't bail. I'll be back tomorrow dropping more MLB plays, more MLB picks. Let's get this money today. Drop me a like if you like this video and subscribe for future content. It's first look, a lot of information coming your way, but I hope you guys find it actionable and you win some bets today because of it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm out. Peace.